I guess this is kind of feeling like take two for this one. What, uh, what exactly happened with that last fight? What, what, how come that got ruled off? What happened to you that day? I, uh, I've never been that sick ever. And I tried to uh, pretend it was okay. And the doctors were like, okay, we're going to let you have till 3 o'clock. And at 3 o'clock when we come in here, we're going to do some tests. And if you're not ready, we're calling the fight. And at 3 o'clock when they came in, they... Uh, they called the fight. It was really weird. I was, I got like food poisoning, but I was like all vertigo-y. You know, like when you drink too much with your buddies and you get home at 3 a.m. and then you got to put your foot on the floor to quit spinning. I, it was like that. It was really, really odd. And uh, whenever I'd stand up and like close my eyes, I, I was like all like strangest, yeah, strangest feeling. I remember my, uh, my best friend who always comes to my fights was in the room with me and I was like, at midnight he came in from out having fun in Austin and I was Laying there like, man, I don't feel good, bro. And he's like, nah, it's probably just your nerves because I'm a wreck, you know, normally. And he, uh, I was like, yeah, it's probably right. And then about 30 seconds later, I was throwing up and shitting myself. And uh, once all that was done, then the, I was just doing the dry heave puke where nothing comes but just, Aah! that was fun for a while. And then got some Pepto Bismol in me and it set, kind of settled my stomach. But the, it was just, Vertigo part that was crazy. Any idea what it was, like at all? Well, everyone's trying to say it was the street tacos we ate. Now, let me explain about the street taco. Please. Let me explain. So, as you cut weight, and everybody who knows when you're dieting, there's certain things that you see that you're like, yep, 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 definitely. So, we were cutting weight at Lifetime Fitness because they had a sauna there, the ones. Uh, didn't have anything, you know. So every day we drive by, and there was a stoplight, and right across was like this taco shop. Well, it was Cinco de Mayo, and it was booming. And I was like, God, that looks good. And then the next day we drove by, like, yeah, that looks, that looks good. Check, that's getting on the list, right? So we all ate there, but I don't think that was it because how could I be the only one that was sick? There's probably I don't know 25 of us that went. My kids, my wife, my grandma, nobody else got ill. But I did eat this, like, tapioca something at the deli downstairs. And that's – I think that's what it could have been. I don't think it was a street taco because everybody ate it. And we all ate off – like, my, me and my kids ate off the same plate, yeah. right? So, um, yeah, I don't – plus I got a crocodile gut, man. I normally can eat – I can eat the egg sandwich from the gas station and be okay, you know? Uh who knows what it was? It was wild. So uh, no pinpoint to it. Everyone's like, I can't believe you ate street tacos. I was like, hell yeah, I did. They were good as shit, too. <laughs> Two weight cuts back to back, though. I can't imagine that's been very fun. You know, yeah, yeah, for sure. It's a lot of it's a lot of fun. But uh, my light, weight's been really low, so that's cool. Yeah, I was 166 yesterday. Kind of, I've been like 66, 68, just floating the whole time. So I didn't put weight back on if that. I didn't do the patty batty. I just kind of cruised. So um, hopefully 10 pounds won't be nearly as bad. What do you make of the patty batty uh, fluctuation that we see? Hey, man, if he's still young, he's got it. I mean, that's what he wants to do. I mean, the only problem with him getting big like that, it sucks because the first part of your camp goes to losing the weight. You know what I mean? Like, it just you're just battling that. But I mean, he's still young. He's learning and playing. I mean, shit, go, go do it. Get big. If you like pizza and lasagna and beer, Eat it, brother, because you earned it. So uh, do your shit, and then it just sucks. But is there a silver lining that this fight's been postponed to the week your your movies come out? <laughs> That's kind of cool, right? It was, yesterday was a big premiere. It was fun. Um, sucks I didn't get to go to the red carpet and enjoy all the premiere side of it. I was here, but ah man, it, that movie was so fun. Gina was amazing to work with. She did great, amu- amazing like screen presence, and it was. It was tons of fun, man. I enjoyed the shit out of it. That's awesome. Obviously, last time you got very emotional talking about your kid. Um, I'm not trying to get you emotional again, but that's still still the inspiration behind this. And now he gets to watch you in an arena full of people who dress like you too with the yeah. cowboy hat. <laughs> yeah, for sure. He'll be dressed up in his cowboy gear. Both of them will be. They, uh, yeah, they get in tomorrow. They'll be here. Um, even last time, he didn't quite understand, you know, like for the weigh-ins. You know, he got to experience that, and he was like, what, what was that? And I was like, I it's hard to explain. Like, that was weigh-ins. Like, well, what are weigh-ins? I'm like, well, I have to make weight to compete. And just, you know, a four-year-old, it's tough to yeah. understand, you know. 
try to explain it like a Ninja Turtle. Like, well, imagine the Ninja Turtles are fighting Shredder, but they all have to weigh the same weight. And he was like, okay. Like, you know, it's just <laughs> weird. Just trying to explain to kids is, is fun. <laughs> uh, in a way, does that like kind of good? It was like a dry run for him, right? It wasn't like overstimulation that he got one thing. Now this time he'll get both things. Or, or you just think like he'll be able to cope, whatever. Yeah, I was kind of worried at first. Like, man, the pay-per-view, that was a big one. That was fun. But Austin's going to be big and fun too, you know? Uh, so uh, it's cool being in Texas. We'll have a lot of people wearing cowboy hats and screaming. So, uh, again, we're, we're another live card, and I'm glad the world's coming back around. So it'll be fun. Yeah, last one for me. Uh, I know the last time you're like, oh, the retirement talk, get the hell out of here. So, but uh, have we all agreed that 50 is just a nice round number? God, it's cool, right? Yeah. I was wrong. Um, this is 47. So I need. 47, 40, you know what I mean? I, I believe, I believe. Uh, this is 48. 48, so then two 49, more. Then so two more after this one. Yes, and 50, 50 is an incredible number. I mean, hopefully no one will touch it, so uh, I can bow out. That'd be awesome. Uh, for that 50th fight, I know it's a little ways away, but do you think to yourself, like, okay, for 50, for the, the big one, do I want to go out fighting another legend like me, oh. or will I fight an up-and-comer and get a kid kicked off before I leave? No, 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 no. I, uh, another legend would be fun, you know, a cool, a cool fight. And, uh, yeah, no, like, stay away from the young kids. They're fucking tough and crazy, man. <laughs> <laughs> They're so good. This sport has evolved unbelievably. You know, it's, it's fun meeting and talking to all the kids at the PI. Of course, I did camp at PI, so I see all the young kids and up-and-comers and see them fighting with their job and staying hungry, and it, it pushes you. But I remember when I first came to the sport, you could be good at a couple of them and great at one. And now it's like, hey, you have to be great at striking, wrestling, jiu-jitsu, like everything. And these new kids that are coming in are great at everything. So it's crazy. Well, I got a spirit rape. I wondered how long that was going to last. All right, so Cowboy, back in Austin, you had the main event in 2018 against, you know, Yancey. And obviously that went really well for you. Does the location of the fight matter as much to you or, like, as more of just fighting in front of a crowd? Oh, in front of a crowd. Location's cool. Like, Texas is fun. Um, uh, Denver would be, if I could pick, you know, I really love fighting in front of my home crowd. But uh, I love traveling. Like, I would have loved to fight in Singapore. Cool. I love seeing the world and traveling. And not just the crowd, you know. There's something about – I couldn't imagine being a football player or a baseball player and performing in front of a – it's like a big practice game, you know. I mean, I fought the Apex. And it's just weird being so quiet and, and off, you know. The, the the roar of the thunder is real. I feel it. Now, what exactly was this last month like for you? Like, did you take a week off to kind of recover from the sickness, or was it like how long did you wait before actually getting back in the training room? I tried to get back in and do some training, but like my insides hurt. If that makes any sense, like you know, I start pushing the body, I can feel fatigued, and so it took about a week, but. I'm in great shape, man, and uh, cardio and being in shape is all like it's never an issue for me. I don't ever, you know, I do. Everyone's like, you need to. It's funny the the, the naysayers on social media like, you need to not do that and be training. Like, man, for one, I couldn't train 24 hours a day, no matter if I was superhuman, can't be done. And yeah, I do a lot of fun activities and fuck off, you know. But it's just what I do. But don't trick you, you know. We we train. That's what we do. It's what I always do. And so even when I'm not fighting or have a fight we're training and it's uh so yeah we we got it done the cardio is always top notch and just it's tough to uh, i feel bad for joe like man joe sorry bro like you gotta fire back up again you know so um we talked on the phone i called him and he goes i know cowboy you would have taken that fight if you could have and i said thank you and you know in 50 fights hopefully everybody knows that it had to be serious for me to say no go you know i fought sick before and that was just a different kind of sick but uh what did i do all week man fucking a lot of fucking off a lot of working on my ranch and building fence and training and yeah <laughs> just every day she had and how important was it to, for you to keep this fight with joe very uh on his behalf you know like it was a fight that uh i didn't want him to to train all this time and and, and lose it. so i called him Literally the next day, like, Joe, this is going to happen. I'm going to find the date, um, and we're going to make it happen. He's like, okay, thank you. So, yeah.
Lastly, for me, you know, when you open up the UFC record book, right, like your name's all over the place, you know, tied for most, uh, most in all these different categories. Is there one in particular that, when it's all said and done, you want to have as your feather in the cap? No, I mean, like when I walk out there on Saturday, I'm setting more records again. And the only thing cooler than setting records is breaking your own. I mean, what? <laughs> it's, a, it's a cool feeling, man. So, uh, nah, just. Just setting, setting so many that the young kids got a hell of a job to try and catch me. Kevin, how how understanding has the UFC been with you? You know, you're 50 fights in. A lot of fighters, they're not able to just walk away on their own terms. Um, what are your thoughts? You know, um, again, I talk to the young kids at the PI about this all the time. And they're like, yeah, but we're not cowboy. And I say, hey, man, I was you once. I stood where you stood. And you guys bitch about money and you bitch about all the rights and the things that you you think you deserve. Like, man, you need to – this is an entertainment business. You need to create a name for yourself before you start making demands. Yeah, you're making 12 and 12, but you just fought for Uncle Larry's show for $500. You know what I mean? I get it. Win, win, win. Get, get your name. Then the pay comes. And then the opportunities come. And then everything comes with it, you know? So, um but yeah, so when I have the freedom to to make choices and decide where and when I fight, that's just 15 years in the game of, of being a company man, you know. Um, I've never said no to a fight. The only time I've ever said no was to a location, and that was just recently. Like, no, I don't want to fight the Apex. I want a crowd, and they were like, granted. So um, never said no and just say yes. And now you get in this era where these guys are like, the coaches get the opponent, and they're like, mm, stylistically, that fight doesn't work for me. And the UFC takes in that account, like, oh, you don't want to fight? Well, he will. So we're, you know what I mean? So they, it's just a, they're a machine. And if you're not greasing the machine, then you aren't part of the machine. And that's, that's how they work. How important is that for, like, young fighters to be, uh, you know, not be too picky or choosy about fights? Um, I understand on both sides of, of the looking at the machine and looking at the fighters. You're like, well, I guess if I take that fight, this is a dangerous fight. Maybe we had a, a amazing performance, but we lost. Another loss is gonna is gonna wash us up, so we need to pick and choose. But it's like, man, if you go out there and have two amazing performances, they might just say, you know what, that kid comes to fight, and we're gonna keep a hold of him. But I also get it on the management side where they're like, I don't know, man, this isn't a smart fight for us to take. And the UFC sometimes says, all right, if you don't want to take that fight, then have a nice day, you know. And it's tough, but. You want, I mean, how many, what is there, 600 of us on the roster? So we're less than a percentage of the world's population. If this is what you want to do, you need to be prepared to go do it. You know, you have to be that dog. And uh, I don't know, it's, I see this sport moving a lot away from fighters trying to become athletes, and now it's more athletes trying to become fighters. Like, yeah, they're great, good, awesome at their sport, but when it comes down to biting down and giving it, maybe they don't have it exactly what it takes so i don't want to crush dreams and you know but it's, it's, it's a tough sport man and then lastly for me i know there was uh, some comments from anthony smith uh recently uh about you and dan bilzerian did you want to you know speak up on that um well for one i saw anthony a couple times and he never said anything to me so for why he waited for three years to go by and the, <laughs> it's it's i just don't know if he's trying to stay relevant why he would bring that up and uh for one you know, because you go to the fights, your name is literally on your chair in Dana section. So, cowboy, cowboy. So, nobody was sitting in my seat when we showed up there. It's not like we were like, hey, mom, get out. You're not in this seat. For one, you walk in the back. The security grabs you and walks you to your seat. Ticket, ticket six, seven, okay, right there and there. So, it's not like you can just free range, walk around any seat you want and be like, get out, you're in my seat, or get out, I want to sit there. And if they were there and we kicked him out, how did they find another seat? I, I, the whole story doesn't make any sense to me, so I don't I don't get it. But uh, uh, I, I'm not sure where he even came up with, like, fabricated this story from. It's, it's, it's funny to me. And then to say Dan was sitting there watching porn, that means after we threw your grandma and mom out of their seat, they sat behind us, and I, I, I don't – it's, it's strange to me, so I, I don't know. Do those kind of comments upset you? You're, you're a legend in the sport. Um, I think everyone has great things to say about <laughs> you. <laughs> Does those, those kind of comments upset you, you know, this late in your career? 
Nah, it, it just upset more of the people that don't under, un- know what's going on where they, like, make comments like, oh, we're going to kick another grandma out? Like, those who are like, man, first of all, you're not even educated in, enough to know what's going on in the story for you. To, but in this world, you can get on social media and say anything you want. So I just, I'm numb to it now, man. But it's just, I don't get why Anthony didn't just come to me or call me, you know, if if he was there and, and, and seen it and witnessed it, why wasn't, why wasn't something hap- said right there on the spot? Why would you wait three years to come out with it? I, I, it's strange to me, but, uh, and if I was drunk, which probably was a pretty serious case, you know, at a USC fight, but the seat still said cowboy on it. You know, um, I don't recall kicking anybody out. Could it have happened? Possibly doubt it, but, I uh, would definitely not kick someone's mom or grandma out of the seat. Like, I'm not that guy. You know, if it was another dude, probably like, hey, man, scoot over. You're in my seat. But someone's mom, nah, man, that's, I'm not that guy, you know. Plus, uh, I know everybody here. I would just find another seat, you know. It's just a, it's, it's a strange story to me, but whatever. Thanks, Kelva. Yeah. Good. Thanks, guys.